Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be talking about income and wealth inequality and what can be done about it. If after watching this video you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the Total Review Booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. Let's get into the content. The United States is the richest nation in the world and yet we still have a surprisingly large number of people living in poverty. Now I'm going to focus mostly on income inequality, but these ideas apply to wealth inequality as well, because accumulated income inequality leads to wealth inequality. First, we're going to talk about some of the non-market reasons that economists identify for income inequality. Differences in motivation could cause some people to earn more incomes than others. Inheritance is also a contributing factor. Access to credit and financial markets. Social mobility or a lack of social mobility can change income as well. We also have differences in the ability to bargain for higher wages in income. And the final non-market reason for differences in income is discrimination. Of course, since this is economics, we are going to be focusing mostly on the market reasons for differences in income. Because in this class, we focus on supply and demand. First, let's look at some of the supply reasons for differences in income. Education is first, and that's because the more education you have, the fewer workers there are with your human capital. And as a result, people with higher educations tend to be paid more. Depending on the skills that a particular worker has, that will also decrease or increase the supply of that particular labor. And government licensing requirements can also impact the supply of a particular type of labor. When there is a low supply of a particular type of labor, those workers are going to tend to have high pay. And when there is a high supply of a particular type of labor, those workers will tend to have low pay. On the other side of the equation, we have the demand for resources that also impact people's wages. Education is also over on the demand side of things because educated workers tend to see a higher demand for their skills. We also have human capital or skills and knowledge. The more skills and knowledge a worker has, the more demand there is for their services. We also have the marginal product of workers. Marginal product is of course the additional units of output that a new worker adds to the total of output, which means that the more productive a worker is, the more valuable their labor is, and that increases the demand for their labor. And finally, we have the marginal revenue product. Remember, marginal revenue product is the marginal product times the marginal revenue, often the price. And so if the price of the product also changes, that will impact the demand for the worker. And the two biggest factors that contribute to the changes in the demand for a particular type of labor are, of course, the marginal product and the marginal revenue product. In fact, the marginal revenue product is the demand for labor, as you learned back in Unit 5. And of course, when there is high demand for a particular type of labor, there will be high pay for that particular worker. And when there's low demand for a particular type of labor, there will be low pay for that worker. Now that we know some of the reasons why we have wealth and income inequality, let's look at how we measure income and wealth inequality. In this class, we measure wealth and income inequality using this thing called the Lorenz curve. And we have this data here for the United States in 2018. We are going to be comparing cumulative percentages of households and the cumulative percentage of income that is earned by those households. The bottom 20% of Americans in 2018 earned 5.2% of the nation's income. The bottom 40%, so we're adding the next 20% to the original 20%, the bottom 40% earned 15.5% of the nation's income. The bottom 60% earned 30.5% and the bottom 80% earned 53.2%. And since we are adding each additional quintile or 20% group of people, the bottom 100% are going to earn 100% of the nation's income. Now we're going to turn this into a graph. We have here a Lorenz curve. On that x-axis, we are going to have the cumulative percentage of households. And on the y-axis, we have the cumulative percentage of income. We have a 45 degree angle line going up through the middle there, and that is the line of equality. The closer that Lorenz curve is to the line of equality, the more equal the distribution of income is within an economy. And if we graph out the data we had from that previous table, here is the Lorenz curve for the United States in 2018. Of course, like most of the graphs we have in this class, the Lorenz curve can be drawn without any numbers. There is our Lorenz curve, and as the Lorenz curve moves inward towards that line of equality, the income distribution is becoming more equal. As it moves away from that line of equality, the income distribution is less equal. Now the Lorenz curve can be used to calculate a Gini coefficient. That is another way of measuring income inequality. And the Gini coefficient comes from the Lorenz curve. We take the ratio of A divided by A plus B to give us a number. And if that number equals one, that is a country with complete 
inequality, where one person owns all of the income. And if we have a coefficient of zero, that is complete equality, where every bit of income is evenly distributed. Of course, every economy in the world falls between those two. And here we have some different Gini coefficients for 2018. Which of these countries do you think has the most equal distribution of income? That's right, it's Australia, and that's because they have the lowest Gini coefficient. And which country over here has the least equal distribution of income? That's right, it's Brazil with the highest Gini coefficient. Now taxes, of course, can make distributions of income more equal or less equal. And we have different ways of categorizing different types of taxes. All of these categories are based on the percentage of income they make up for the payers of those taxes. The first type of tax is called a regressive tax. Regressive taxes have a lower percentage of income for the rich and a higher percentage of income for the poor. Sales taxes are one type of tax that appear to be proportional, we'll talk about those in a moment, but they're actually regressive. If I buy an item with a dollar of sales tax and Bill Gates buys the same item with a dollar of sales tax, that is a much higher percentage of income for me than it is for Bill Gates. And that's why sales taxes are considered regressive. Gas taxes, tobacco taxes, and many other taxes are also regressive. Progressive taxes are the opposite of regressive taxes. Progressive taxes have a higher percentage of income for the wealthy and a lower percentage of income for the poor. United States income taxes are progressive, and that's because marginal tax rates increase as incomes increase. We have estate taxes, also called inheritance taxes, as well as interest taxes, investment taxes, and other things that are all considered progressive taxes. And the last category of taxes are called proportional taxes. Proportional taxes take the same percentage of income for rich and poor. And although we don't have a lot of examples of proportional taxes in the United States, there have been some proposals to change our income tax system to a proportional, also called flat tax system. Now let's take a look at this hypothetical data here. We have some different amounts of income and some different amounts of tax that people are charged with those incomes. What type of tax structure do we have here? Now this may at first look like a proportional or flat tax system since it's the same amount of money or $100 from each level of income. But if we calculate the percentages of the income, that's the tax divided by the income, we see that the percentage actually decreases as the income increases. And as a result, this is a regressive tax system. Here we have another example. Here we have different levels of income and different amounts of taxes. Is this one progressive, regressive, or proportional? Well, if we take the dollar amount of tax and divide it by the income, it gives us the percentage for each of these levels of income. And as we can see, the percentage doesn't change with the level of income. As a result, this is a proportional or flat tax system. So let's take a look at the impact of different types of taxes on the income distribution through the Lorenz curve. Proportional taxes are going to leave the income distribution the same. And as a result, the Lorenz curve is not going to shift. Progressive taxes, on the other hand, will decrease income inequality and shift the Lorenz curve toward that line of inequality. Regressive taxes, on the other hand, are going to shift that Lorenz curve outward because they are going to increase income inequality. Transfer payments are another tool that governments can use to mitigate income inequality. When people receive transfer payments, income inequality is going to decrease. Anytime the government gives citizens money, we call those payments transfer payments. Examples of transfer payments include social security, unemployment insurance, and food stamp programs. And there are many others, including your Pell Grant for college financial aid. The impact of those transfer payments can also be seen on our Lorenz curve. Increases in transfer payments are going to shift that Lorenz curve inward as they decrease income inequality. And decreases in transfer payments are going to increase income inequality, shifting that Lorenz curve outward. And there you have it. That is everything you need to know about income or wealth inequality. If you still need a little more help, head over to reviewecon.com where there's lots of games and activities to help you practice the skills you need for your exams. That's it for now. I'll see you all next time.